Hi, everyone. Welcome to Metaphysical. The Great Wall, mysterious Chinese pyramids, and evidence of ancient civilizations are just some of the strange things that have been found in recent times from a long forgotten past. What else is hiding in the lost history of Asia? Well, here are the craziest stories we found in this episode with remote viewer John Vivanco and me, investigative researcher Rob Counts. It's going to be a show that's out of this world. Yes. And listen, if you are listening to Metaphysical Podcast or watching us on a video platform, please leave us a five-star rating and review to help us reach even more people and like and watch, subscribe, whatever you're doing. Just Watch it, subscribe, Just help like us it, out, whatever. <laughs> Just help us. Do all of it. Help us reach more people. Yeah. Hey, John, how, how are you? Doing well. How about yourself? Good. I'm fairly excited for uh, for this two part series. Only fairly. I found some uh, some scorchers. Well, heck, I mean, like all what what is it for the last week or so? You've been like saying, "I'm gonna blow your mind. I'm gonna blow your mind," but you won't tell me what it is. No so... way. I got away for the show. <laughs> I'm like. Well, what is it, man? <laughs> well, uh, actually, usually you have the information that blows everyone's mind because yeah. remote viewing stuff. But in the second episode, I, you I'm know what? No, I got to counter you on that. I got to counter you because the research that you do on this stuff, like you dig up the weirdest things. You <laughs> dig up the weirdest things. too. <laughs> yeah, we, we get into some weird stuff for sure. For sure. Um well, yeah, and 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 uh, yeah, the 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 pyramids in China are are quite weird. I mean, we we've talked about pyramids in some of our past episodes. Pyramids are uh, generally strange for a lot of prehistorical reasons. Um, you know, the question came up while we were doing that episode: like, is China any different? Like, what are these pyramids? What were they using them for, and why? And and then, what's the history of of these pyramids and what don't we know, you know? Well, I don't, I mean, I don't think that many people out there even think that China does have pyramids at all there, but. Yeah, it's this strange I, thing where, no, but it's not just pyramids in China that it's no one, no one is talking about. Generally speaking, there is this strange great wall of China in terms of information, even more than like the physical artifacts or, or ancient civilization things that are there, you know? Right, right. But I mean, like, look at, okay, so look at the Giza Plateau. When we go to the pyramids, look at the Giza Plateau. And you've got, yeah, I mean, you've got pyramids there, but not nearly as many as there are in China. And yet we know nothing about these pyramids. And, and they, they won't allow us to study them at all. They're very right. secretive about these things. And, and I mean, look at this photograph. I mean, you know, if you're listening to us on a podcast, um, we have a photograph up in the video and this is, it's a grass covered a mound huge plain, uh, in yeah. China where uh, there's hundreds of these things and there are trees and plants growing on these pyramids as if and, they've either been hidden or, <laughs> Tried to but be look hidden. at look at those look at those trees like those trees do not at all look organically grown like somebody planted clusters right. of these trees in almost ordered you know the, like an ordered amount of space between one another right right and we're supposed to go ahead and believe that that just happened naturally when there's no other trees around them anywhere right right you know some of them some of them are actually just in rows in lines like they're freshly planted trees probably been there 20 30 years or 30 something years right in these rows where it's it is weird because the growth of the trees seems to imply more recent uh planting of these trees um, potentially when, the the, you know, the government changed, I don't know, um, or, or, or during the duration of this current government. Um, so that I find a little bit curious. I know that there are images out there of like Teotihuacan, for instance, where they're covered in dirt or they're covered in plants, these, these pyramids and nature takes over these things we know, but I mean, that takes a very, very, very long time. For nature to take over and then you know you've got you've got this idea of like if that thing's covered in dirt if that thing is covered in dirt and you've got this solid structure underneath 
what happened if that was natural? What happened to cover that? What sort of crazy cataclysm? It could it be a cataclysm, or is it just you know nature right. over over thousands and thousands of years? I mean, how could they be completely covered in dirt and mud? And you know, I can see like the argument for thousands of years, but when we have World War II pilots seeing these things and reporting what they're seeing. Right. And then all of a sudden, a few years later, they can't find them. It gets really that just get, is bizarre. Yeah, so that's bizarre. Did, did you hear about um, this guy named uh, James Gossman? His name was a World War II pilot. So, oh, G yeah. James Gossman, 1945. He's a World War II pilot. He's flying from China to India and a large pyramid caught his eye. OK, the, the weird thing is he described it as 100 feet tall. That's 300 meters tall. And it was it was about a thousand feet tall. Yeah, it was pure white on all sides. And now he was quoted as saying, quote, the remarkable thing was the capstone, a huge piece of jewel like material that could have been crystal. There was no way we could have landed, although we wanted to. We were struck by the immensity of the thing. Now, this this is a thousand feet tall. That's twice the size of Giza. Right. Yeah. And his name's uh, excuse me for the for the mistake there. His name is Gaussman. 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 So James Gaussman was his name. Gaussman. So yeah. you know that that. Though we did look at that one with remote viewing, but you know, the white covering, so the white, you know, he claims it was white. Um, right. and I think there were more, there was more than one person who saw this white pyramid. There was, yeah, history, right. I mean, who else saw this? There, I mean, there, there was a guy named uh Colonel Maurice Sheehan, he was the far eastern director for tran the Trans World Airline, and he reported seeing the same white pyramid. And then the New York Times ran the story that shocked the world um, and, you know, was considered one of the biggest archaeological finds ever. Right. And then just a couple of years later, gone. No one can find it. <laughs> there, well, hey, it's got trees on it. That's why <laughs> it's got, you know, 50, 60 year old trees are growing on it now. Right. I, don't know. I mean, how long ago did that happen? 19, 19... 1940s. 40s. Okay. So yeah, we're looking at, you know, uh, 80 years. So you've got at least 80 years growth there. Um, so, wow, that's, I, that's, that's, that's actually really incredible. So you've got multiple eyewitness accounts of this pyramid and then all of a sudden it can't be found today at all. So, so obviously like us armchair sleuths would be digging around on Google. We know, you know, there's a lot of obfuscation that occurs with these platforms, especially, uh, with that one. Um, so what I find interesting though, is the, the, the white, because the white covering on the pyramid, because the Giza plateau, um, at least one of those pyramids, the great pyramid, I believe had, had a white sheath on it, a white covering. Right. And, and I think it was, what was it? Was it limestone? That was covering it and it started to break off. I think there was an earthquake or something break off. And then and then people started pulling it off to use for uh, other constructions. And so now it's it's totally gone. Uh, that's gone. When we looked at, you know, the Giza, the Giza pyramid. Um, there you go. That's a great image. When we looked at that's what it looked like. Right. That's that's that picture that Lindsay's showing is what it looked like. Um, and they did have capstones on them looks like a jewel. So right. that covering acted, you know, these things, these things with our remote viewing data, it goes down the path of these things are capacitors and that, that covering acted, acted in the, in the whole construct of creating energy, creating electricity among other types of energies. So, so it does not surprise me one bit that multiple people saw a white pyramid there in China. And we're, you know, we're looking at, we're not talking about Egyptians either. That's, that's the culture that's currently there. And obviously, yeah, I'm sure there's, there's bleed through, there's bleed over culturally and, and through people, but, 
But as far as like cultures go, this is previous. This is previous to some great cataclysm at least 11 to 12,000 years ago. So these now, things- now You're talking about the Chinese white pyramid right now? I'm talking about both of them. I'm both talking about both of them being from the same culture. Really? Yes. Traversing yes. that large of a distance. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we think we think in terms right now of of when civilization began, you know, in Mesopotamia, Sumeria, our modern civilization, and how it grew and spread out, and and how you had these isolated um, civilizations all over the place that were forming their own ways of, of of living and culture and building and stuff. But previous to that, it was more of a I wouldn't say worldwide, I would say more region wide civilizations that that I mean, shoot, even when you go back into um, when you go back into and do comparative mythology for the gods from ancient times, a lot of these the descriptions of the gods cross over and you go, whoa, these are the same. These are the same ones, you know, whether you're talking about uh, the, the descriptions of gods from from Nordic, from the Nord Norse. Mm -hmm. To, to the um, Sumerians, Mesopotamians, to the Indians. Mm. I mean, you yeah. can meld them together and realize that, wait a second, there was something on a broader scale worldwide occurring here because a lot of them cross over and have this all the same attributes and did the same things. And so that goes, goes along with the pyramid type structures. They were from a previous civilization that was much, much larger. I wouldn't say that it was like um, really dense, but it was just more spread out. It was more spread out across the earth. Well, and it, it kind of, I mean, you know, speculation could lead you anywhere on this one. But right. what's interesting is this idea that Atlantis was not just one, the, like the reshot area. It wasn't just one little area that Plato was referring to, but rather the entire global civilization at the time. Right. And, and we, we think about large distances in terms of China is across the world, but in reality, if we're looking at a civilization whose technology was much greater than what we currently have now, then is it possible that the globe was, or, you know, the earth was a, small sort of like planet and we were traversing planets and this was just one of the places in which human beings could be found you know because when you yeah. when you open it up to outer space and and the infinite possibilities the earth is is tiny in comparison right oh yeah i know i you know it's like with you know through remote viewing i've, I've come to just think of it as the migration of mammals through the universe uh, because mammals migrate, they migrate from planet to planet. It's what we've seen over and over again. And no matter what planet they migrate to, eventually you have pyramid structures showing up. So, I mean, it's just a common thing that we see on other planets and other locations. So, you know, Mars, yeah, like Lindsay's shown us here. I mean, Mars, Mars has got pyramidal type structures that were constructed as well. Um yeah, oh man, there's just so much to talk about here. Where are we going with this? This is just like to go down these funky rabbit holes. But like when you get to the reshot structure, for instance, we had looked, we had been trying to locate, we were doing this project on trying to locate Atlantis, you know, the idea of Atlantis. And, and throughout all that, I came to the conclusion that it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter if you locate something called Atlantis because, you know, you're not going to walk up on something or, or scuba dive and find something with a big marquee that says, welcome to Atlantis. Yeah, big time. <laughs> right, exactly. And so it doesn't matter because all across the globe, you have these, these civilizations underwater, these old civilizations underwater. So why, why do you need to find, why do you need to focus on something called Atlantis? I mean, there's where all the fighting is. Atlantis exists. No, it was a, it was a, it was a fable that um, Plato or whomever had created Socrates. I don't remember who, who actually wrote about it. I think it was Plato originally. And it was supposed to point out the, what the hubris of, of men back in that day um, and their civilization being destroyed. So the argument is around that, whether it was an allegory or whether it was something real, but 
if you dispense with that and then just look to see what is under the water throughout all of the earth from the Yonaguni monument to yeah. Dwarka to in the Azores to in the Bahamas, who cares about Atlantis? <laughs> Who cares? Uh, yeah, really. But, you know, it is. It's one of those things that really fascinates people, I think, because the history of discussion on it goes back for so long. But there's there's a number of other anomalies out there, too, in terms of islands. Like, you've heard of High Brazil that, that appears once a day off the coast of Britain? No. What, what's this? It's like a phantom island, dude. Like, I just, I got into a rabbit hole a few weeks ago, and I was like, what the hell have I not heard of this? <laughs> you know? Like, there's so much local like local myth of things that have actually gone on historically. You really need to get in there and talk to local people about stuff, you know? Like, oh yeah. It's like hanging yeah. out in bars. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, totally. Yeah. It, it, that's actually how you find leads. Like that's where you right. get leads, right? Because right, the local exactly. people won't hold back in a bar about what they heard is going on. Like <laughs> exactly. if you want to know about the Jersey devil in New Jersey, go there, go to a bar, talk to an Italian and he'll tell you what the hell he saw, you know? Right. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I High Brazil, it, it, fascinating, fascinating thing. Like it hasn't been seen since, uh, eight, since 1872, but like it was on maps, dude, like this thing, you know? Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. I, I've never heard of this. I'm going to have to research yeah, that. And, what and, you know, it's what's bizarre is like, what don't we know about China? Because China right. is already so walled off. And, and you know, it's already like, it's probably one of the most mystical places in the entire world that the entire the entire globe just has no clue about. Unless no, we, actually... we do. If you watch kung fu movies, man, <laughs> we do. <laughs> but actually, you know, uh, to you know, it's it's interesting that you brought that up. But those things are such a wonderful representation of a deeper culture that's there that i mean look at star wars star wars never would have existed if it wasn't for the taoist culture in china i mean george right. lucas was obviously impacted by this right 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 and you know you've got the great wall of china the only structure that can be seen from space you can see the great wall from space think about that for a second how long is that it's, it's like miles and miles like and miles something long. around like 10 to fifteen thousand miles long or something it's crazy and like think about all of the people that died making that thing oh right thirteen thousand yeah. miles wow thirteen thousand miles wow those, those chinese Thir guys there just kidding those chinese guys <laughs> the star wars crew <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah well um so the great wall okay so well what was it built for what was it built for i mean it could have been to keep out bad movies <laughs> <laughs> because the great wall movie was probably the because worst so movie bad. in history <laughs> yeah like i was just like matt damon why why did I you know why did you agree to do that movie man yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I actually had some hope going into that movie that it was going to be interesting, and right. um, it was, it was, it was terrible. Yeah, it was, it was not good. Yeah, I know. We we looked at that too, the Great Wall. Um, gosh, we didn't even talk about the pyramids. What we found with the pyramid yet? But I'll just jump, I'll jump on the Great Wall um, real quick. We um. We viewed that, and I, I was really, 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 really super hoping that it was to keep out monsters. Me too. I was super duper hoping that, but it wasn't. And and in fact, um, the data actually, which was really interesting, the data actually went more towards controlling um, migration, controlling migration, like from the north. So it wasn't. It wasn't. Of course, there was defensive idea around this yeah. but more so what it seemed to be in our data was to control the um the northern migration from the mongolians coming down because they would come down during the winter into the more lush lands and it's easier to survive and so they were they were they were basically monitoring and allowing and not allowing that type of um of movement to occur and so the wall, at least up, you know, on that northern high, high, high northern part was to control that movement and to potentially even tax them to tax that kind of a movement. Um, we do have defense, but most of the data went down that path and it was really interesting. So I'm looking at the data 
and I'm doing some research and I came across some Israeli um, anthropologists who actually came to the same conclusion. So our data supported what their hypothesis was on why the wall was built. And then, you know, doing more research, the wall was kind of, it was, it was, they were built it in little sections, right. over, you know, hundreds of years. And then eventually, I guess in one dynasty, they connected the whole thing up. Right. Right. So, yeah. You know, I mean, unfortunately, no monsters, more just so, like controlling of populations. Interesting. Cause you know, I, I actually wouldn't even have thought that I would have, I would have thought you would have pointed to, okay. So when we zoom out, looking at historically, what the great wall did was it, it sort of, it, it was early, it was early in the days of China and the, why do they call the, the king of China an emperor? It was because the emperor was the king of all of the kings of all of those different lands. And the emperor was the one who, who basically combined all of the kingdoms into an empire. And I thought, and I still do to some extent that this great wall was really, um, a really quick way of sending messages. I mean, think about it. 13,000 miles, you light a beacon on one of those, they get lit along oh, sure. the entire thing. Right. In, in an hour or less, you know you're going to war. But that's all part of it. Or you know, That is right. all part of it. You know, that's, that's, that, is, that is part of the whole structure of the wall where all the uses were multiple, right? I mean, it wasn't just one use. Right. You know, you've got protection, you've got um, uh, entry point, a border point for taxation. You've got alerting others way down that thir God, 13,000 miles, seriously? 13,000 miles. 13,000 miles to alert what's happening like on the other end of it if there's a battle going on. I mean, it's used for all of that stuff, all of it. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And who knows, like, man, I was doing research last week or something on... I think that there was there is a lost art of raven communication like they were using and it may not just be ravens but when you look at birds like most birds can be trained to give messages exactly how they sounded from the originator and the birds getting hey, trained like they're going to talk like no, they talk dude no 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 I'm not oh. kidding the, <laughs> like birds can be trained to speak no, I know. Do you yeah. remember? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Do you remember when we were in Australia? Yes. And we went to, we were, oh, I think we were somewhere around Sydney. I think we were leaving Sydney. We went to some beach town. And so we're sitting around there getting some ice cream. I don't even know if you were there or not. You may, may not have been there. I remember this. Sitting around getting some, east, some ice cream. Oh, and there were, these, there were these, uh, there were parents. all these parents around. Yeah. Did you hear the one that was saying ice cream? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so there was like, there was like, there was like those white cockatiel type parrots. I can't remember what they are, but they were everywhere, just wild flying around and they go after your food. But there was one, there were a couple that were hanging out, but there was one near the ice cream shop that was saying ice cream. I remember. I mean, that. this is a wild parrot. Yeah. Yeah. So it hears that and it knows what it wants, right? Right. So, but they're, they're smart. They're smarter than people think. And, and in the past, they were, I, you know, if you if you watch, you know, Game of Thrones, they were passing information on like through something written. They'd give it to the raven. The raven would know where to fly. No, I think they were these things could speak in the past. They would train them to speak and then send them somewhere to deliver a message super fast. You could send one there and one back and you'd have it right away. Like they were the iPhones of the past. <laughs> oh it sounds crazy, but actually, like if you start looking into it, it gets super weird. Right. Yeah, it's that is super weird. Yeah, you know nothing, John. I, I can't. I can't. Like, how long did it take to? Tra they must have been able to train them quickly on giving messages. I mean, I think in the yeah geez. in the past, like you know, you'd lose a bunch of them, so you'd have a bunch of them. Probably there was someone in the kingdom that was just the, the bird guy. <laughs> the weird. Would bird, you have to get a new bird, bird guy. for every message, though? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if they, like think of the use though, it's so it's such a useful right. tool if you get that down, you know. Right, right. So you could well, really fast send a message to another uh, royal or a king or something to tell them what's going on in the kingdom, right? Right. right. Having a couple hours. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's, uh, who is yeah, that? Yeah. One one time, actually, I <clears throat> I was at my parents' house and 
I, I was, they had this like grove of trees and stuff. And I was walking around in the grove of trees and, and I heard this, hello, hello. Yeah, dude. I'm like, I'm like, what's going on? I'm like looking around something weird's talking to me. Didn't know what it was. And, and I, I ran inside the house and, and my wife was there and I was like, there's something out there talking to me. There's something out there talking to me. Come on, come on. And so I bring her out there and we're walking around and it's, and we hear something going, hello, hello. Dude. And I look up at the tree and there's one of those big, like, yes, in the tree. And I'm, yes. and I look up, I'm like, oh my gosh. And so I literally hold my finger out like that and start whistling and it flies and just lands on my finger. And so I just bring it inside. <laughs> Dude, you can, I'm telling you, I was looking into some of this. You can barter with birds. Like yes, you right. can actually, so if you start feeding a bird and you up the quality of the food that you give the bird, the bird will start bringing you back better and better gifts as an exchange for the food that you're giving it. Like, this is a thing. You can look this up and it's like, oh, yeah. they. So people think like they say bird brain, like you have a bird brain. They think birds aren't very smart, but there's something way crazier going on with birds that people give credit for. I don't know how we got into this conversation, but I'm kind of glad. No, I've, I've been watching videos like I, it's weird that you bring that up because I've been watching <clears throat> some videos over the last couple of weeks of ravens. Basically, people are doing this with ravens where they'll be feeding them and then eventually the ravens are going to bring them money. Yes. Yes, they'll yeah. bring you twenty dollar bills. Like they exactly. know that you want. Like, that. where are they getting this no, from? <laughs> no, but yeah, but how are they that smart? Think about it. Right. Like everyone thinks they're stupid, but they know what humans want. And if right. you, and if you feed them stuff that they that they want, they will try to bring you back something in return. They'll find a twenty dollar bill on the street. They'll bring it right. back to you because like they've got an exchange going on with you. I know. And so for the last couple of weeks, I've been looking around to like see what birds are around to see what I can do. I mean. <laughs> That'd be fun. That'd be pretty cool. Um, <laughs> okay, well, we should probably get back into pyramids here. Right, pyramids. All right, so right. So there's a huge plain in China that contains, I don't know how many pyramids, at least 40, they say? 40? Yeah, so there's – okay, so yeah, I've got a little – I found a blog. It's, it's from a Chinese site, um, and – they so this guy basically says that with the help of Google, we found more than 20 other pyramid shaped structures of varying sizes throughout uh Xianyang. The bases of these buildings are all very uh regular quadrangles and are clearly man made. I got this translated for you guys, so this is how I know what this is saying. And it says, Okay, as to why there are so many pyramids gathered near Xi'an, that's where the, the pyramids near the emperor is. We'll get into the emperor in the next episode. Uh, a guy named Qin Jianming said that the Western, <coughs> excuse me, the Western Han Dynasty had 12 emperors and its capital was in Chang'an, the ancient name of Xi'an. OK, the Tang Dynasty also had its capital in Chang'an. So it's not surprising that 20 to 30 tombs are concentrated in the same area. And there may be others that we have not found yet. Yeah, right. Right. Yep. I mean, OK, so. Okay, so this this area, uh, and also when you get to that big white pyramid. So the big white pyramid, a couple witnesses had seen, um, was a thing. It was a real real pyramid. It's just been covered up now and covered up quickly. Uh, that was used for um, electrical generation, energy generation, just like the pyramids in Giza. Same same thing, um, and. When you get to these other ones, not just electricity, but there was a form of communication. Um, Between the pyramids? No, not necessarily. There, there, there was like this, this, this high priest kind of situation where there was an, an adept, a person that was adept in communi telepathic communication that the pyramid would amplify. And because these things were made in, in ancient culture, older than what you have in China, in Egypt, whatever, they were a culture that understood other races from other locations and communicated through this system with, I mean, it sounds wacky, no, but that's what shows up. Crazy. This is movie stuff. Right. This is what shows up in our data. This shows up all the time. So that the high priest would use the pyramid basically to communicate um, telepathic it would enhance telepathic communication with beings in other locations across the universe other planets that were in the same structure so you can imagine that that 
let's just say on Orion, for instance, there's another pyramid that it that high priest knows how to communicate with the high priest on the one on Earth, right? So there's this telepathic link connection that the pyramid helps create. The energies of the pyramid help help create. But you have so to be in a certain place in the pyramid in order for that to take place. So the pyramid's sort of like Professor X's helmet. <laughs> yeah. Where it helps him communicate right. longer distances or makes his power stronger or something like that. Yeah, that's that's basically it. That's okay, basically so it. just trying to put this in layman terms for all the my my for every single out person there. out there. <laughs> yeah. Um so okay, but what okay, here's here's a question I have and and maybe you can help me understand this, John. So when we look at scientific research over the last hundred years plus, we see things like, you know, the Einstein Rosen bridge, how this thing gets created is through basically two large masses, one forming here and one forming across the universe, a wormhole gets created and, and you, you could theoretically travel between this wormhole to get from one place to another. It bends space time, whatever you right. want to call it. Why is it that a pyramid is able to do this and on in a certain dimension what what is it about the pyramid or the pyramid shape that allows for this type of i mean think about the distances of communication that we're talking about greater than light speed this is well, this all is you different. need to know the thing is is that okay so consciousness exists outside of 3d 3d reality so it's, it does it's not being held by the constraints of physics here consciousness right. in general which is what we are and so so it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter what sort of like physics idea you can come up with surrounding it because they're not going to catch that. It just won't. It can't be measured. And so what the pyramid seems to do is it seems to create more chi type energy, mm -hmm. like more a, a huge amount of chi, and it, it exists orgonish type of energy. Exactly like that, and it seems to exist right in the most of it seems to exist in the bubble about like half to three quarters of the way up within a pyramid. Most of that energy exists there, and so in that zone, in that area, is where the high priest type person would go to to enhance their own energy to move into an altered state because they've been trained in this and then have the focused intent to connect to, you know, somebody that they've, that they know that they want to communicate with who's in the same construct. So they would have received probably physical information. Yeah. Communicate with this person in this intend to communicate with this being in this other location, go into that spot, put yourself into the altered state. The energy of the pyramid is going to help you in order to communicate with that person or being. But pyramids also extend the life of things. They do. So we've got, okay, so we've got a sort of communication or day-to-day -day use that you could kind of conceive. But then also now we see in this civilization, two separate cultures putting their tombs within the pyramids to preserve the bodies, mummifying, mummification, preserving the bodies. And... But was it also this communication or this idea that the pyramid would help the person contained in that tomb to transcend this world and go into, uh, I don't know, like, think about it. If, if, an, if it's creating an altered state in a person that's alive, is it going to do the same thing for the spirit of someone? Is this what they believed? Well, I mean, okay, so what... So it's okay. So let's look at that plane first. And I get to that question because the plane where you have all these pyramids there, there's yeah. a ton of them there. Um, what, okay. So first off, what it looked like is that there weren't as many there way back when. Um, and it was used as sort of like an electrical, I don't know. Grid. Like, yeah, exactly. To create, to produce ele electricity and energy. Because you can you can absolutely do that with pyramids. So wait, 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 how do you do that with a pyramid? Do you know? Uh, it's the basic shape and the orientation of it. I, there was actually this whole video series on YouTube that I I, I have saved that I saved offline to do the experiment myself, where a, a guy builds a pyramid, and then he it's like fourteen videos long, and he takes you through step by step okay. how to power an appliance with a pyramid. And this that literally, I mean, it wasn't a faked video. It was literally this guy did it. 
so 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 this is something that I I've been aiming to do, tr- wanting to do, um, but I haven't gotten to it yet. So apparently you can, <laughs> you can. So anyway, the um, the deal with um, the deal with that plane there is that what the Chinese did is that they they knew what was there and they built on top of them. They like repurposed them for their own uses and they stored stuff in there. They put um, their dead in there, the dead emperors and their families, what they what they wanted to preserve, what they wanted to protect, protect. Um, and, and, you know, if you look at a lot of there's some uh, photographs of of ancient um, in Peru, for instance, in Cusco, Peru, where you've got these massive, massive stone blocks that are like so tightly jointed and so beautifully formed in every way. And then on top of them, you have the newer culture building. Yes. On top. You see the Built, difference. Yeah. There? So the smaller rocks are like this newer culture trying to use the structure. Exactly. And so you can find examples of this. Look at, you know, they, they, they didn't have that technology anymore. This is from somewhere else, but they wanted to repurpose it. And so that's a lot of what the Chinese have done to those pyramids. Um, and you look in Egypt um, as well in, in, uh, in the tombs and the pyramids, they would often have a false door where it would be a, uh, a door, a pretend door that's cut into stone. It doesn't go anywhere. It's just like a, a pretend door. And that was the door that was to be the place where the dead were supposed to go through, to pass through. Now, I don't know if they truly understood the energy of the pyramid and that that actually would help a person who is deceased. I think more, they found it to be a, a great monument that they could put their great leaders in, right? Uh, I think I think ultimately that's what it came came down to. But the, but the Chinese, you know, they they basically repurposed what they found there before, and then also built more of those things. And that, like, and this is an interesting image right there. I mean, look, that is that is the cut stone at one of the Chinese pyramids. Look how look how that is huge. M- that is. massive. Yeah. That what that's about twenty feet large by about five feet or four or five feet wide. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Huge. That I mean, must be so heavy. That must be at least what, like, how many thousands of pounds is that? It would be. It would be very difficult for engineers to be able to move those into position without a lot, a lot, a lot of machinery today. So, man, and then look how how beautifully cut those rocks are on that pyramid. I know, I know. That's so just perfectly set. Yeah, and think about having to stack these. I don't know how many tons they are, but I mean, stack these things. You'd need you'd need machinery that was like four to six times the size of the machinery we currently have to do that. Yeah, yeah, you would. Yeah, that's why engineers, architects and engineers, um, uh, they often stay, you know, it's, we find it really, really difficult, if not impossible to move these today. So, you know, these things are, I, don't, I highly doubt that, that uh, a culture that, that, well, the claim is that they use uh, chisels and stone hammers. I highly doubt that they're going to be constructing these types of things. Yeah, how are you going to make it that perfect? Look at it. Even lasers would have a hard time cutting stuff this perfectly when you can't like the you can't even fit a pa- piece of paper between the rocks or something, you know. Right, especially when you get to the Incan ones, the, right. the so-called Incan ones in Peru. I mean, those things are spectacular. I mean, it's almost as though they're molded, right? If you look at them, there's they they appear to be molded into shape with all sorts of funky crazy cuts in them where you have another crazy rock that's been molded into shape. It just slides right in, fits right into it. It almost looks like concrete. Wow, that is crazy. Like, think about how how would you even cut that? That why would you do that too? It's like why would you do it? Yeah, they're really bizarre shapes that almost look like they were cut and then specifically cut so that you could put down the next rock. But it's like beautiful randomness. 
Right. <laughs> yeah, it is. It really is. Oh, so strange. Yeah. Some of them are just so incredible. I just, they're mind, mind. You're like, yeah. You're like, you're custom cutting rock. Let's say you have a rock, you put it in there. Then you're like, ah, oh, just cut this and then fit that there. But you're doing it one rock at a time. It looks like not even, that's right. not, that's not a plan. You know, right. the plan right. is the overall shape. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a puzzle. And it, you know, it's, it's, they're really interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm sure some of these, some of these, the smaller ones were, were cut by hand, most likely, and put into place. The bigger ones, I mean, you think about that. How, how, are, they, how are they cutting this and putting it into place? And so for those of you at home listening, we're, we're looking at a bunch of, obviously, a bunch of megalithic structures that some amazing species in the past must have put together. They had like expert masons. You know, all of this stuff gets way easier to believe even if we don't have notions about giants existing in the past. Right. If giants were actually, if there were giants, if, if, the, if the many cultural um, things that we've seen in different books and, and, and stuff are, are true and there were giants in the past, this stuff becomes more plausible. Yeah, it does. It does. I mean, obviously, yeah. technology is a, is a piece of this too, right? But right. Exactly. But also, it's aliens. It's aliens. <laughs> you get the Giorgio so close look but there. But that's the thing: is that when we look at some of these things, not all of them, some of these things, the way that that stone was manipulated was through sound frequency and heat. So mm. sound frequency mm, would 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 almost jellify it. Mm. Um, so, so some of it, not all of it. And so there, there was something, and that's why it's really interesting to see like, like an old technology and an understanding partially of what that old technology at least did right. it to get it into that shape. And then, and then on top of that, you've got the newer cultures building, trying to like use it, re reuse it for something. And their technology is, how does it go from super high, amazing shapes, technology, obviously some type of technology or understanding to a degradation in understanding on how to do that? I mean, that that flies against the theory of evolution and, and how yeah. our civilization grows. Yeah. It goes against it. And it's not <clears throat> Incan. It's pre-Incan, something deeper, deeper in time, just like the Chinese pyramids. Right. But we don't get to look at them. We don't get to dig them up, right? Because they're keeping it under wraps. Right. So, okay, you guys, for, <clears throat> for more info on this topic, watch our metaphysical episode on harmonics and frequencies. We've got actually a bunch of stuff on that. If you haven't seen that episode yet, definitely go check that out. Um, and, you know, we're talking about a lot of megalithic stuff here, the pyramids. But, John, I want to get your feedback I know you haven't looked at this yet or anything, but have you ever heard of the hanging in the air temple in China? No. Okay. Uh, Lindsay, can you pull this, this link up? This is a really famous temple in China that I think had, I mean, an insanely, you know, famous past just, just because of the, the architecture of it. I mean, monks building some of the craziest stuff ever into, oh, yeah, yeah. It, right. into the rock walls. Like getting there is just really hard. Well, again, I mean, like think about that Tibetan story we talk about every once in a while where they levitated the stones. Right. Uh, based off of sound frequency. I mean, could this be same same thing? But yeah, you know, it's funny too that the Asian cultures, when you get to China, Tibet, whatever, they... um they would first like make their little monasteries in a cave. Right. And then eventually build out around that cave. Well, you, know, you know, what's, uh, what's interesting. And we can probably end this episode on this. Um, and I think this is a really interesting Chinese idiom. The idiom is any mountain can be famous with the presence of an immortal. Any river can be holy with the presence of a dragon. And and the immortal culture and the the heavenly creature dragon culture in China is so 
strong and so different than anything we have. You know what? That that actually that, that, it's a down a crazy rabbit hole, especially when you talk about Mount Sinai and the worship of volcanism and fire and stuff. I mean, because of the, these things are related. They're all related. Like we got to end. Yeah, and we're, I mean, we're gonna like, talk for another like hour if we do we this. Gotta end. Yeah, and never mind. Like, dude, we're gonna have to get into Hawaii sometimes because I have some crazy yeah. stories about Pele too that we should probably talk about. But um, all right, you guys, uh, for everyone listening, we're uh, we're gonna wrap this episode up. But but just wait, there's more because in the next episode where we talk about Chinese culture and the things we found hidden. In China, we are about to blow your mind and bridge some things that no one has talked about before. So definitely watch part two of the ancient history in Asia. Um, and for those of you watching, please uh, remember to like and subscribe wherever you're listening. Uh, definitely give us a five-star rating and review if you can on podcasts just so that we can reach more people. We'd love to reach more people with this podcast, blow their minds a little bit, and um, get everybody thinking in a different way about this awesome world that we live in. John, All what right. do you think? I think that was great. All right. Well, it's been an awesome episode. Thanks for being here. And uh, you guys, we'll see you soon on the next episode.